We're back with uh, Coach Lowry on Case Down Online here, Associate Head Coach of Kansas State Basketball, Coach Chris Lowry. Thanks for joining us once again, Coach. I know we just talked to you last week, so now, you know, extra treat. We get to talk to you again specifically about the signing of Logan Landis. How are you doing, Coach? Good to see you again. I'm good. I'm good. Um, glad to be back and um, hopefully make this thing a lot of fun again and, and, and a lot of, and really informative for our K-State family. But um, but Logan, yeah, actually signed this morning very early. Uh, very unique story about him um, is he had planned this whole big, massive celebration today, but he's in quarantine. So <laughs> he had to do it this morning in his house with no fanfare with except for his family. And, you know, um, obviously we're super excited to, to get him and his potential moving forward. So, yeah, I guess break down before we talk about what he can do on the floor, break down the recruitment when you started to talk to him and uh, just how the relationship built from there. Um, obviously, you know, his AAU uh, coach, uh, Antonio Curo, runs the Phenom University AAU program. I mean, they've got guys at Duke, Virginia. They It's a big-time program out of Milwaukee. Um you know, Wisconsin area, and, and they've ha they have great players. They have guys committed to Iowa State now. They have the number one player in the country, actually, in the AAU program uh, for 21. So those guys, you know, he does a tremendous job. His kids are ready to go when they go to college. He coaches them hard. Um, he, he does a terrific job of just making sure his guys uh, are ready to compete when they get to where they go. So – you know, we're excited to not only get a, a kid from his program, but also a kid from Milwaukee for where Coach Weber's from. So what really intrigued you about Logan? What can he do on the floor that made you guys think that he could fit well at K-State? Well, we, we were looking for a skilled guy with size. Um, and, we, you know, obviously, you know, you get spoiled by a guy like Dean Wade, who obviously is, is as skilled as they come. And in no way am I saying Logan is the next team weight, but what I'm saying is Logan is very skilled, can shoot three-pointers, has range to, to our line, um, can score around the rim with both hands. And, you know, that's, that's what we definitely needed. We needed a guy who, who, who could make different plays um, as a forward. How ready will he be to step in next year and play, or is it something that you still got to play by ear? As far as that goes well i think the biggest thing for all kids coming out this this 21 is that they don't know if they're playing their high school seasons yet so knowing who's going to be ready or not is kind of dependent on whether guys play um this year you know we knew the guys that came out of 20 they played their a whole aau they played their whole summer i mean they played their whole fall they, their since their seasons basically ended around state championship time so we knew those guys would be ready because we, we actually saw them you know for a calendar year these guys, you know, we haven't seen in person. It's it's a it's definitely different in recruiting now with streaming live tournaments that happen in the spring and in the summer. And we watched every game he played uh, this spring and summer with, with the Phenom team, um, and just going back to his his, his his year before as a high schooler, and and you know we liked what we saw, and uh, and coach really uh, wanted to sign a guy with that size and potential. And, you know, obviously super excited to, to get Logan in the family. Absolutely. So I guess the last question I'll ask on Logan is, you know, he was, good, you know, reclassified to 2022. You guys were able to bring him in as a 2021. Um, how different is that? And how much was he, you know, a top prospect for you as far as the big men go in the 2021 well, you know, we, we were recruiting him before he reclassified, so we were trying to get him yeah. then. So, obviously, we told him we would take him in either year, you know, because, you know, obviously, we see something, we like it. We make our decision based on a, our own opinions and rankings, where we see, as opposed to letting other people tell us, you know, his potential. We watched him. And, and just, just trying to move forward with him, we just told him that. And as the time got closer, he asked if we thought about, him in 21 and we were like absolutely uh so being excited about that and just getting him to come in this class um with what we already have inside and you know as a as a forward and and our, all of our mm -hmm. bigs combined 
Um, we like what he brings to, to the table. And he had offers from Kansas, Miami, USC, a lot of big time offers uh, for, for a kid that, you know, skilled big man, you know, you don't get that every day. So what is it like also, you know, to be able to, to you know, beat out some of these big name schools for Logan services? I mean, it's relationships, you know, and obviously um, where he's from, where Coach Weber's from played a part in that. Um, the ability to know where where he, he he's grown up at and who he's played against. And, um, you know, I think he connected with Coach, you know, really well. And his dad, obviously, connected with Coach Weber. So I think when, when, when you look at that side of it, and you look at Dean Wade, you know, Dean Wade is, a, is you know, is an NBA player. He's a Cleveland Cavalier. So to – be able to say, hey, this guy has, had very, has a very similar skill set to you, and look what we did with him. You know, that comes into play. Last thing on Logan I want to ask is, uh, he's, I guess baseball was, you know, his first sport, and he recently, you know, decided to decide, make ba basketball his, his go-to. So has that ever got brought up in the discussions and the recruitment, and what does he say about that? Oh, he's definitely going to be – uh, in, in the in, you know watching K State baseball when he gets here, I mean, <laughs> okay. he, he grew up a baseballer, you know, and I you know throughout the process, man, what's the difference between you being a high high end baseball pitcher? And he goes, Coach, it's it's the recruiting's different. It's a couple miles per hour on my fastball, and I was like, wow. So I mean, you know, he 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 was playing with high end traveling teams, and he was a part of that culture, and you know, just so happened he can make a jumper. And, you know, he decided to, to change up and, yep. you know, I mean, he was a definitely a legit prospect and, you know, he, he just talked about as a pitcher, you don't get to pitch all the time in high school, especially with traveling teams. You've got a lot of high powered guys. So you may, you may pitch one week and, you know, one day out of five days uh, in an all-star event, you know, they got three or four other guys. So, you know, that's the stuff he, he sat around a lot and he said, in the hoops, you get to play, you get to, the action is, is, is constant. And, um, you know, obviously he has room to grow. He's not tainted by the process or, or you know, the whole basketball stuff that goes on sometimes when a high-level kid is, is sought after. He had none of that at all. And, um, you know, we're just glad he decided to, to be, be a Wildcat. So, I, yeah, I mean, it, hopefully you guys will be able to get him on campus sometime sooner than later, but obviously that's still up in the air with how that will go. Uh, last few things I want to ask about, you know, so now you have one scholarship taken, a signee, signee for the 2021 class that does leave open one more, I believe, you know, because of Mike McGurl leaving at the moment. Uh, so what, what kind of position are you kind of looking for right now that the fans should be on the lookout for possibility uh, of adding in the 2021 class. Still. We're looking for a good player, obviously, you know, that's a, that's always, you're always on the hunt for that. And, you know, we like our guards, obviously, you know, you would take another big wing. That would be something that we would definitely probably do moving forward. And that's definitely got to be the future. Um, we have to sign a, a wing with some size, um, because we have we, like the, our guard, we have good versatility in our guards right now, but not as Xavier Sneed size, mm -hmm. you know. And that's that's what you know we have to get a guy that that big six five six six um, that can guard multiple positions uh, moving forward. And before we wrap it up, the season you know is right around the corner. We got the Little Apple Classic uh, with Drake in Colorado. Uh, South Dakota State is out, right? They're not they're not coming anymore what they, happened they are out right as of now i mean you know some of it is the hot spot some of it is this mm -hmm. scheduling stuff right now is hard you know there's 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 actual mtes getting canceled and 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 even happening right now as we speak just people trying to find games so many people are still trying to get to 25 games so um you know some people of some leagues have said we're going to play when the when the uh when the when the conference starts and some people trying to get a couple of game startup games to prepare for for league play so i mean it's still an ongoing process for a lot of schools but drake and colorado are still planning on coming so what kind of challenges do they pose after looking at some film of what they've been doing able to do last year well both 120 so they're both and they have a lot of people back both of them you know obviously drake 
um, lost their big kid to, to Minnesota, but they got a they got a big kid from Seton Hall waiver. So they replaced one big and got another, you know, high major size kid in six ten, six eleven. So, you know, and their guards are really good. So they return mm -hmm. all, you know, most of their guards and have great guard play. And obviously Colorado re returns one of the better players on the West Coast uh, and their point guard. So McKinley Wright. So we understand um, they're going to return, you know, a guy who's preseason player of the year in some periodicals on their team. So, yeah, it's an exciting matchup for you guys coming up. Uh, what are the players thinking about, you know, obviously you don't want to look in ahead to Colorado. And I feel like when we talked to Mike last, he talked about how he's focusing on Drake. So are these players really excited to get to the season? They don't even care who we play, to be honest. They just yeah. want to play and have the opportunity. And I think that's every kid in the country doesn't care who they play as long as they get to play and mm -hmm. just being um, ready for the first one is our most important thing that, that we're trying to convince these guys. And then after that, we'll prepare as we go. Awesome coach. Really appreciate the time as always. We got to talk about Logan Landers, look ahead to the season a little bit. So unless there's anything else you want to add, we're signing off and you can tell the people out here to tell their friends. Well, just, just looking forward to our next football game, man. Obviously, you know, I'm a huge football fan. I, you know, I, I, I like the cats. I like where we are. I know it's maybe some doom and gloom, but we'll be all right. We're, gonna, we're, 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 we're good. Those young boys are going to keep growing up. And I think that's what's exciting about our football team is the future and, and knowing our young players and, and who we have as, as upperclassmen are going to continue to grow. Absolutely. Bye week right now. Iowa State in a uh, week and a half, basically, in AIM should be fun. So appreciate the time as always, Coach, and we'll talk to you next time. All right. Thank you.